Hi, my name is David Awad. I am one of the many wonderful developer evangelists here at R3 working on Corda. And today I'm going to give you guys a tutorial on Docker with Corda in five minutes. So I want to start with a quick primer on the basics. So what is Docker? Imagine you had a program you wanted to share with someone that allowed you to perform some particular function in the browser. You've made some kind of web application. It uses a particular version of a programming language and maybe has some dependencies. So you want to share this application you've written with somebody else. But unfortunately, that person needs to install the same programming language, needs to have the same dependencies, and has to set up the same exact environment in order for the program to work correctly. You may find that this tends to be a little bit frustrating because you can run into different problems on different operating systems and different versions of packages and things like that. So what Docker does is it lets you write a singular file called a Docker file that lets you outline all of your exact requirements and specify them in a single place where you can publish this file and publish a corresponding image as well that has all of the necessary requirements to run a Docker image, otherwise known as your application, on any given machine that supports Docker. And barring some unusual processor architectures, you will basically not have any issues with making your applications completely portable, scaling them horizontally, and making really interesting things happen by automating your processes around container management. And the industry is doing some really cool things with it now as well. So all that being said, let's ask the question of running Corda containers. So if you are running Corda inside of Docker, we have some pretty cool tools for you to use, mainly our custom Gradle plugins, and I'll show you that in a little bit. We also have a network bootstrapper and a node explorer that you can use that works seamlessly with Docker containers. And do fortunately, Docker makes it pretty easy to get started. So let's start with the basics. The requirements are loaded for you. Corda publishes Docker images regularly, which is really nice. Today, we're going to be using the Corda Zulu image. The Corda node communication can be automatic if you're using something like Docker Compose, which has the ability for your nodes to connect seamlessly. We also have a really easy workflow for developing your Cord apps. You can very quickly iterate on and rebuild your network and test your flows. And of course, you still get Corda shell access along with all the regular Docker controls and Corda dev tools. So without further ado, we are going to outline our Corda configuration. We're going to actually develop and deploy our nodes, and we're going to demonstrate a transaction together. So. Uh, let me minimize myself real quick. There we go. Then I'm going to jump into the terminal here where you'll see I've cloned the, our samples Java repository. If you jump into your browser, you will see a link for this repo available online and the link will be in the description below right underneath the like button. You can take this repository and we're going to use my favorite Cord app, the Yo Cord app. So I've cloned it onto my desktop already and made a few edits, and I'll show you what those are. Inside of the samples Java folder, just jump into samples Java slash basic slash yo dash cord app. Once you're inside there, you will want to take special attention to build.gradle. Now this looks very similar to the yo cord app's original build.gradle, with the exception of a few small changes. I've copied the corda configuration from the original cord form task and added a few adjustments. Mainly, I've specified the Docker image that I was referring to earlier, the Corda Zulu jar, and I've also added some SSH ports, specifically 2223 and 2224. In this Corda network, we only have three nodes, the notary, party A, and party B. And of course, with the context of the Yo Cord app, all we're going to be doing is sending a Yo from point A to point B. So once we've saved this file, you should be able to go down here and run dot slash gradle w prepare docker nodes which is the name of the gradle task we just created and if things go well you should be able to see an output like this one it might take about a minute so i'm going to save us some time and not wait for it here but you'll see it creates the node directories for party a the notary and party b and then it creates a docker compose file that we can use for bootstrapping our network so i'm going to close this real quick I'm going to go into the build slash nodes directory. I'm going to take a look at the Docker compose file that's been generated. Inside of here, you can see most of the things we'd expect. There's a notary service, a party A service, and a party B service. 
And so each of these services, of course, has a lot of the things we created earlier. There is the ports for the peer-to-peer -peer communication and the SSH. It specifies the image that we outlined earlier. And of course, here are uh, all of the things you need to actually copy onto a node if you were going to run a distributed uh, service on it. So you'd need things like the node configuration, you would need certificates, you'd need the persistence files, of course you'd want the core apps themselves, which are just jar files. So we've only created three services in our, uh, build, <coughs> in our build configuration from earlier in the Gradle side of things. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this. I'm going to just create a new terminal in this directory. So I'm going to go docker compose up, which just tells docker to run and create all three of the services. So this may take a few minutes to run. What we're going to do is after this is run, assuming things go well, we'll be able to SSH directly onto one of the nodes and then run a flow. Ah, there we go. One point I wanted to make about this is that inside of build.gradle, we actually specify the passwords here. So in this case, it's port 2223. The username is user1 and the password is test. Make sure not to use that in production. All right, so while we're waiting for this, the next thing I wanna do is I'm going to do a Docker PS. And what should happen once these guys are all running is we should be able to see the ports that they are using and that have been mapped. There we go. So we see here port 32778 has been mapped onto port 2223. This is for the party A node. So we should be able to just SSH using this. So I'm going to SSH to user one on localhost and the port I'm going to pass 32778. And it asks me, am I sure I want to continue connecting? You will type yes. I thought I typed yes. There we go. And I'll use the password test from before. All right, now I've got the Corda shell and I'm going to start with a quick flow list. And so you can see that we have the yo flow built in. So I'm actually going to run it. I'm going to type flow start yo flow with a target of party B. And so we should see that start running and it starts the flow. It creates the yo, it signs it, it verifies it and it sends it and completed with results. And it gives us a signed transaction ID. Awesome. So that is really all it takes. So I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you for taking an interest in Corda and please do feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you very much.